Hey guys, it's Vera from Ready Visuals and in today's video I'll be showing you a quick tutorial on how to create proxy files in Premiere Pro. So you've probably noticed by now that editing in Premiere Pro can be very slow at times, even when you have the playback resolution set to the lowest setting. This is particularly true for those of us who edit on laptops like I do, and most laptops have a very limited capacity compared to like proper stationary editing computers. So to help with that problem, in Premiere Pro you can create proxies, which are a low resolution equivalent to your high resolution raw footage, and it's a lot easier to edit with proxies. Proxies are really useful when you have 4K footage or when you want to apply a lot of effects to your standard 180p footage. Just be careful when messing around with frame rates, time remapping or nesting as when you sync back to your original footage it doesn't always line up with what you did to the proxy. So let's get into the tutorial. So I have created a new project in Premiere Pro and imported all of my footage into it. Before I start editing anything my first step is to create proxies. So let's pick the drone footage. I'm gonna drag one of the files onto the timeline. So when I play it back, you can straight away see how choppy it is, how long it takes for Premiere Pro to register what I want to do, and it's just very annoying to edit. I can't skip through it at all. So in order to create a proxy, you need to make sure that you have the Adobe Media Encoder installed on your computer, and that it is the same version as your Premiere Pro. In Premiere Pro, to create a proxy, I'm going to right-click on my file. By the way, you can do this for multiple files by highlighting more than one. We're gonna go down to proxy, create proxies. So this dialog box comes up and it gives you a few options that you can choose from. You can add more options by going into the media encoder and creating presets for your proxies that will give you more personalized options. But the simplest option is to just pick one of these. So for the format, I like to use QuickTime. And for the preset, uh, the first two options are my own personalized ones, so you probably won't have them if you've never made proxies before. So I'm going to pick the ProRes low resolution proxy, which is very similar to the preset I have created. So we're going to hit OK, and if we go into the media encoder, we should see that our file appears in here now. If you have a lot of footage, it can take quite a lot of time to create the proxies, so I recommend that you do this overnight or just go off and do something else. Proxies can save you so much time when you're editing that it's really worth making them. So now that the proxy is done creating, we're going to go back to Premiere Pro and I'll show you the difference it makes. To toggle between the proxy and the original footage in Premiere Pro, you can use this button over here. You should be able to see a slight change in the resolution. If you don't have this button, you can simply add it by clicking on that plus icon and dragging it down onto the toolbar. So now that we have the proxy, let's play the footage back. And you can see straight away how much smoother it is to actually play back. And when I try skipping through it, it's pretty much instant. I can skim through the whole clip without any problems. But as soon as I go back to the original footage, it becomes just extremely choppy and I'm pretty much unable to work with this if I want to get through the video really fast. This is basically how you create proxies in Premiere Pro. Anyway guys, I hope that you found this video useful. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below and I or Aaron will answer them. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to see more of our content. And don't forget to follow us on Instagram and Facebook to see more of our work. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye bye!